You're watching Force 13's live streaming service. Surprise, surprise, this is Force 13 Live, and yes, we're saying it. We think that Noct 10 is a Category 5 storm based on the current satellite observations and Force 13 sat ops. My name's Nathan Foy, hello, it's nice to see you once again on this Christmas Eve, and lo and behold, you can see me, hello. Um, I'm also joined by the Skype team this evening, this morning, consisting of David, Lee, Craig, and Lachlan, and anyone else who may have joined in the last few minutes. Hello. Yeah, good evening. I can go good away evening. now. Good don't, morning. You don't need to see me. Hello. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> are they're over there somewhere as well. We'll get to see them very shortly indeed, I promise. Uh, but what's more important than that is what is going on right now. And regardless of the storm's intensity, we certainly think it's a Category 5 at this point, oh, yeah. winds of 160 miles an hour. But also, we have Signal 2 warnings uh, in effect for the island. I always struggle with the pronunciation of this one. <laughs> Catanduanes, I believe it is. Do correct me. Do correct me mm. if you're in the Philippines. What a fluent one. And that is Mason. wrong. Uh, but just quickly, Signal 1 warnings also in effect. You can see on the map there. This is Force 13's map, by the way. You can follow it on the website. Just click the Philippine button on the left-hand side of the homepage and you'll uh, get there. Um, but Signal 1 warnings for Samar, uh, large parts of the other islands just south of Luzon, and the southern part of Luzon, then the eastern part of Luzon as well, Signal 1 warnings, and it's only going to get worse, I'm afraid, as we get towards Christmas. Uh, let me give someone else a chance to speak then. Who wants to take the floor first? Uh, Nathan, just before we start anywhere else, mm. you have trouble pronouncing a name. That's like me with, Sa with um, Saipan and Sapien, you know. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Just oh, we do now. It, really. There we are. But anyway, um, Typhoon Noct 10 really has blown up within the last couple of hours. In fact, all day today, um, since last night, it looked pretty much terrible. And I mean terrible. Until now, I mean, it went from looking like, you know, a terrible storm to an absolute monster by looking at it. it it's... Min. Yes, um, we were being shown. Who who was showing us that uh, graphic there? Because you might want to show it again because we didn't get to see it very well. That was me. So go ahead. Here it comes uh, I just wanted to see what. what well, I just wanted to show everyone first what the storm looked like on visible there, and uh, we also have the infrared close up there as well, so you can see what the storm's doing. Look at that eye. That's probably what makes it a Category 5 right now. The eye temperature is 17 Celsius. Um, with cloud tops like that, usually you'd probably see maybe around zero or very low digit positive numbers to see a Category 5 storm as a rule of thumb. Let's take a look at the JTWC's map, um, David. And uh, that was as of three hours ago. Um, at 9 p.m. UTC, which would have made it 5 a.m. Philippine time, I believe. And there's a storm expected to plough through. And I have to say, um, recently the JTWC have been predicting the storm's movement a little bit too slowly. Uh, the storm's been moving faster than the JTWC anticipated. So right now they're saying that the storm's main impacts will start to affect the Philippines may be um, lunchtime Christmas Day, local time, um, extending into the evening and early hours of the 26th in Manila. Um, but this might be a little bit sooner, um, based off how their margin of error has been recently. Um, so we're certainly going to be watching out for that. It's been pretty consistent in terms of where the storm is going to go. It seems likely, very likely indeed, that the storm is going to strike southern Luzon. I'm afraid there's not really a way out of it. Um, hopefully the storm will collapse on itself before then. As you can see there's still a little bit of movement, um, moving time before the storm arrives, uh, but 
with conditions already uh, beginning to deteriorate, I'm led to believe it's, uh, certainly the winds are starting to get a little bit breezier in some of those islands right now. Um, you would hope that the storm would weaken pretty soon. It doesn't appear to be doing that right now. Uh, by the way, uh, this is going to be a pretty brief information session. Uh, we're planning to be here for just the 30 minutes. Uh, it could be a little bit more if we've got lots of questions coming through, but if you do have any questions for us whilst we're on the air, do send us a message um, on the chat feature. Um, and of course you can get through to us on Facebook and Twitter when we're not here. It's quite likely, as, as things are going, that we could be live for a large part of tomorrow on the live streaming service. Um, there's the wind shear map, David. Uh, how the picture has changed uh, over the last, oh, what, 22 hours. Uh, wind shear isn't a uh, issue. Uh, if it gets into the, uh, what is it, the red, the pink, the yeah, white. Well, 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 what we've been saying the whole time on our updates is, the further south it goes, the yep. better chance it's got. Um, so, obviously, you would hope it doesn't go particularly far south, because um, that's where there's a huge channel. It's almost convenient, really, in almost uh, uh, uncanny how the wind shear amounts are so low over the central Philippine islands right now. And decreasing at that. Now, there's the latest imagery that I was showing you at the top of the show. And uh, I have to say, it right now, it's moving due west. Which does not bode yes. well. <laughs> it does not bode well. And uh, it'll probably be a little bit hard to uh, make out the blue sea surface temperature 29. 29 degrees sea surface temperatures. I think it's just heading out of those 29 areas, isn't it, into 28. Uh, but certainly warm enough to sustain a significant typhoon like this, as you can see. Um, I really don't think there is much in the way of argument against this storm being at least a Category 4. We say it's a Category 5 with winds of 160 miles an hour based off the satellite images and we base our claims, as it is only a claim at the moment, um, that the storm is of that intensity because, um, well, we've been looking at a hell of a lot of storms over many years in the past and we've formulated a method of grading them equally and on that scale, from its satellite appearance, uh, it, it does appear to be a Category 5 storm. Um, obviously, it's not as good as direct measurements, but we're not going to get that in the Western Pacific, at least not this year. I have to say that those latest frames there, David, um, the northern band there appears to be detaching somewhat. Not sure whether David's still available. Um, yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm just... Uh, Stopped and I'll just go frame, uh, frame by frame. Uh, Lachlan Lee, would you like to uh, provide a, 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 your thoughts on uh, what's happening? I've all deserted. Well, I don't know. Oh, hello. <laughs> I don't know whether Lee will say anything later. Oh, I'm still here. I'm still here. That's okay. uh, good. Yeah, uh, well, I have to say it's certainly ramped up, um, just as I thought it would actually, um, uh, due to um, conditions uh, above our heads as well, not just the sea surface temperatures. Okay, but, uh, I'm all, thank oh, you, oh, Scott, hello, for Hank. finally being nice to me. <laughs> That's the sound of Hank coming into the live event. You are live, Hank. Yes, I know, but Skype is being annoying. Wonderful. Yeah. Thoughts um, on Noc 10, Philippine name Nina. That's a really funny name, um, Noc 10. That escalated quickly. That's my thoughts. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I did not expect it to get this strong, or look this strong at least. Uh, you never the underestimate the wild, wild west in Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. 
Um, now, uh, I wanted to talk about the areas that um, that are expecting landfalls, uh, expecting bad conditions. Let me go back to the warning map, as you can see here. This is Force 13's warning map um, on the right-hand side of your screen, showing uh, what is to be expected over the next 36 to 48 hours. Now, the these aren't official signal warnings, but they are based, they conform to Pegasus' um, signal system. So right now, so that is to say that all of those areas under the sort of um, light orange color, those are all under signal one, meaning that winds of 30 to 60 kilometers per hour winds are expected in the next 36 hours. The darker orange area is signal two warnings, that means that winds are expected to be 61 to 120 kilometers per hour in the next 24 hours and then you've got the darker still orange signal 3 which is that's out at sea of course 121 to 170 kilometer per hour winds in the next uh, tw in the next 18 hours i believe and signal 4 warnings is for I'm not sure what the higher end is, but over 171 km per hour winds in the next uh, 12 hours. And those warnings will probably extend further west. So we're looking at the southern chunk of Luzon there. I do forget the name of that peninsula. Um, but the whole area that's under signal 1 warnings right now are probably going to get the brunt, um, extending towards Manila. The storm still could pass very, very close indeed to Manila. At one point, the forecast had it just 8 miles north. Um, and then further east, obviously, it's going to be worse. Could see major typhoon conditions um, further east. Yeah. Uh, it ha has Pegasa actually not issued any uh, warnings no, on the they, system? They, they have issued what they, they've got signal one warnings out for those eastern areas. They've not issued signal two warnings yet. Last time I checked, they might have done so now. Uh, I hope they do very soon because it's, it's pretty serious, and they need to do that. Yeah, that's actually kind of surprising if they haven't I'll issued. Check on that now. At least signal two warnings, like for a system of this strength coming in, probably mm. you're going to start getting the spiral bands tomorrow. Um, well, for the Philippines maybe, later. Maybe that's mm -hmm. why they haven't gone overboard yet because the storms it's pretty compact isn't it it's no, that no is, i wouldn't really say it's an excuse but that's probably what they're thinking right now yeah it's, i mean that's a good point but it doesn't really matter the size of the system uh, really but um you know if you get you get a typhoon of Possibly all the way up to Cat Five strength, like we're seeing right now. Um, just waiting for the JT sub, just eagerly waiting for the JTWC to come up with their advisory. Um, then yeah, you got to be worried. A a any any typhoon, regardless of strength, oh, you yeah. should be worried. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, the whole Cat Two advisory that was issued like six hours ago or something. <laughs> it is still That's officially a Category Two, but come on, who are we kidding? Yeah, that's that's not that's not how it works. Like that was six hours ago, guys. A category two with a well-defined seventeen Celsius I with an I wall of minus eighty Celsius all the way around. The technical jargon there. Uh, usually, it means a category five. I'd go as far as saying this is probably the best cat to ever seen. No, <laughs> well, let me t give you this little. Storm last time. I just want to compare it to another storm, Hyma, which happened back in October. When it first became officially a Cat 5, it had lesser qualities than this storm had. It had a warmer eye, uh, it had a colder eye, sorry, a warmer cloud tops on, in the eye wall as well. Um, this storm might be more compact, but I really think it's it's got it's got the it's got the winds there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if anyone has any questions though, what to expect in particular regions of the Philippines, we can do our level best to uh, try and assist. I mean, I guess uh, I don't know if anyone's got some models that they might want to show um, with possibilities of what might happen, or maybe some. Uh, what I like to show is the um, the swathe, that the wind swathe that the HWRF does, and probably the models do as well, to show where the winds are 
spread out over the whole run. If Let's see if I can pull that up right now. Hmm. Uh, but in the meantime, just to just to remind you that the signal one warnings will probably extend across pretty much the whole of Luzon, almost to the northern tip, but not quite. Um, before this, before Christmas Day, um, and then Signal Two warnings, I expect at least will be over the whole of Southern Luzon, possibly including Manila, and Signal Three warnings, I expect, will arrive in the area uh, by tonight local time. Yeah. Of course, it's uh, so here's that. Gas's last advisory is on Tropical Storm, not ten, so it's old. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh. This is the HRRF uh, wind swath path, but this is from you know this morning, so it's clearly outdated. Um, well, what I wanted to bring up was um, where you would expect tropical storm force winds. So don't look at the reds per yeah. se, because that that part of the track is less certain than the greens. The green areas are tropical storm force winds, and that's what most people are going to get, and everyone should be preparing, of course. As you can see, Manila included there in the tropical storm force zone and possibly in the typhoon zone. Um, it's quite difficult to see any other discernible locations on that, but you can see the, the west coast as well isn't out of the woods. It could redevelop into a typhoon, is what that model is saying. Briefly, I'd, I'd be surprised if that happens. Um, and then rapidly dissipating off towards the southwest. Yeah. Um... Yeah, this is definitely going to be a really serious storm for the Philippines, and probably um, probably the worst day to have a typhoon um, impact your country, uh, just because, you know, Christmas and all that. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is that uh, NOC 10 is actually the strongest typhoon this late in the season since Faxi of 2001. Uh, that's a little bit It shouldn't be much later with only a week to go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, let's. I twenty sixteen. You have one more trick up its sleeve, and this seems to be that trick. Hmm. All right. Anything else you'd like to show us whilst you've got it? Uh. Sure. <laughs> um. Let's see. Uh, Westpac. Westpac here is. Uh, GFS. Actually, we could probably zoom in for that. Shows that's not what I wanted. <laughs> no, I don't want to go previous run. Thank you. Um, this is all right. Uh, why am I? Uh, never mind. It, oh, nine fifty. So GFS is showing. Oh, this is the eighteen yes, Z run, and uh, the models have been trending further south, and I think one or two have been saying a direct landfall or two, just like that is. Yeah, possibly, and um, I think this is the Batanas region. Uh, I'm no, not no, entirely not sure. the Batanas. Yeah, the, the, not, the island. The island on the right hand side is. I, I again, I've no idea on the pronunciation, but do correct me if I'm wrong. Catanduanes Island, um, and then further west you've got. Um, I know Sorsogon Province is one of them. Quezon is the part that sort of is the bridge section there with the thinnest part of land. Um, mm -hmm. separating Manila from the rest of that peninsula. Um, and then you've got Manila on the left-hand side. And then the storm... Uh, GFS there weakening it drastically, isn't it? 1,000 millibars by the time it gets near Manila. Well, it, it, it tends to do that. Uh, this is probably going to be you know, a bit stronger. Do like, you think I don't that's exaggerated weakening? Yeah. And then as it re-emerges, it becomes nearly a typhoon there. Oh, I see. Uh, very close. And then just fades away as it moves south actually uh oh <laughs> oh no that's that's interesting uh, let's just move on from that pretend that never happened <laughs> uh god model um is saying oh. that is is also 18z uh 948 right there Unbelievable. and these have been these have initiated with the storm only what category two three yeah uh this is actually cat four right here um, this is basically uh, this time tomorrow night. Uh, saying a little bit further north uh, than the GFS, uh, making landfall in that area. I'd really need to get my phone. Oh, don't worry here. That is 
probably the border with Aurora Province, probably Aurora Province there, landfall. Yeah. So further north, uh, becomes a typhoon again, and then just quickly fades off as most southwest, and mm. let's just forget about that last part that GFS showed. Um, let's see, ECMWF, I do not want the United States, thank you very much. I, I uh, guess we do this because we want to show people all the possibilities here, and mm -hmm. to, to make your mind up on, on what is most likely, uh, all that we can do is give you the possibilities and give you the warnings, um, and just that Signal 2 warnings are in effect for Katanduan is right now, which is just off yeah. the southern tip of Luzon. Yeah, this is the uh, ECMWF. It's saying, you know, this is probably a little bit too weak at this point. It's much, much stronger mm -hmm. than that right now. Uh, similar landfall location to GFS, though it does not curve north. It just keeps going west and then the southwest dive um, and just dissipates. Uh, let's just ignore the CMC for obvious reasons. Uh, <laughs> Navgem. Navgem is agreeing more with the HWF solution, except for the final part. It looks like, I mean, I can't really tell for sure because it's so zoomed out, but it looks like, you know, maybe just a little bit farther south than the HWF solution. Uh, it looks like a right, bit, over, yes. like right over Manila and then just, again, fades. I think that one was a little bit north of Manila. Uh, I think that... It's a difficult one right now if you're in Manila. Um, I mean, and, and again, looking at the latest satellite imagery, there's one or two new frames out since, and it the the, the cloud tops are actually blowing up around the whole northern half semicircle of the eye. If you'd like to take a look for us, Hank, share the viewers. Yeah, I got, I got the RAM imagery up right here. Um, there it is, blowing up the northern eye wall there. Um, let fact, me try that, and get the it. eye temperature. Uh, eye temperature would be about, just discerning off this graphic here, about 10 degrees, maybe a bit warmer than that. Here we it's are. Hard to decide. Um, I've got a little bit higher resolution here, 14. So it's actually gone down slightly from 16 earlier. So the eye, eye temperature, obviously a warmer eye, if you didn't know, means a stronger storm. Uh, but slight cooling there. Yeah, but just because it's slight cooling does not mean that you know you, you can let your guard down. That means you know it's still going to be a very serious storm. Well, I mean, I don't want to give any false hope or anything, but we did see Hagapit and how it weakened substantially. But Hagapit was still a was still a big storm. Of course it was. Uh, of course it, it was. But at, at least, at least it wasn't a Category Five landfall. It was still a Category Three, at least. Yeah. Yeah, it could have been much worse than it actually was. Um. So, where's the what? Wait, why did I do that? So, what else do I want to pull up? Just make. I'm going to refresh this real quick to see if anything's come out. I didn't think so. Comments. Um. Yeah, I've been looking at those. Um, and someone wanting to know, I, mean, I think a lot of people are more into, I can't tell you too much in terms of where the storm, where the storm's worst effects are going to be felt. Um, but let me give you some uh, information on where the bad points are probably going to be for most certainty. So... Um, so you've got the island of Catanduanes, and then you've got the rest of the uh, southern part of Luzon, which consists of these provinces, Sorsogon, Albay, Camarines Sur, and Camarines Nort. The latter two are probably going to get a raw deal from this storm if things go as, pres as, as, things go as it's predicted. Uh, those two provinces could receive Category 2 or Category 3 wins at worst. Quezon Province... Uh, could receive, will probably receive typhoon conditions if the current forecast holds true. Um, the whole, pretty much the whole of Quezon province, extending into Laguna and Rizal provinces, and then towards Manila itself, could a small chance of, of typhoon conditions, well maybe it's not so small, but uh, certainly to be vigilant for tropical storm conditions and its associated effects. And then all the neighbouring Areas around there should definitely be watching out in case the storm switches track north or south. Um, it's more likely that it's going to go north, but it could possibly go south. There's a smaller chance of it going south. Um, 
we're not going to be here much longer tonight, but do stay tuned. Or this morning, of course, in the Philippines. Um, because we, we will probably be live for a significant amount of time uh, during the day um, in the Philippines. That will be later on today, towards the evening. We'll probably be bringing you regular updates on the Force 13 streaming service. Um, so, in the meantime, when we do go off air, in maybe a few minutes or maybe a little bit longer if we want to keep talking... Um, do stay up to date with our social pages, Facebook and Twitter. They'll let you know what the latest is and if we plan to go live again. Um, search Force 13, all in text. And, uh, actually, uh, go ahead. Nick, uh, the apparent viewers are saying that uh, the zeros that come out, and it's only 110 knots, so 125 miles an hour. <laughs> Don't see how, but okay. I think that's completely nuts. That's that's way too low. I don't understand how the JTWC, which uses this information, can say that Maranti was 190 miles per hour. Yet this is not <coughs> a, this is not a Category Five. <laughs> that's that's just ludicrous. <laughs> you know, uh, it's just nuts. Yeah. Now we we don't. We don't claim to be the best forecasters on Earth or observers on Earth, but uh, what we what we can all agree on, um, regardless, is that this storm is going to be a significant problem for the Philippines. I've just detailed. Um, regardless of intensity, it does appear set in stone. I'm afraid that it's going to deliver some significant impacts. Yeah, definitely. I can't understand uh, that. Huh? <laughs> I I can't either. Uh, if it's true, yeah, have you verified it? Um, I only have information from the viewers. Uh, viewers like, um, let's see, Jesper and Karen, um, or Darren, sorry. So I don't, uh, I don't use the JTWC website at all, so I have no idea where to yeah, go. Well, uh, I can, a I can't access the ATCF right now, but I can access RAM, which use the same information, and they they do say the same. That is just. <laughs> you know, you look at the imagery and you've got on the Dvorak imagery you know the Dvorak imagery where it's got the highest the, the, the darkest shade of grey around the whole of the eye usually means a category 5 <laughs> unless it's a particularly horrible eye Could it reach Cat 5? It probably is a Cat 5 right now now let's not forget that the uh, high end four. JTWC are not the officials, believe it or not. It's all very confusing over here. I just need to point out something that a viewer has also mentioned. The Japanese Meteorological Agency have just come out with their update, and they are saying that it's 915 millibars, which sounds a lot more right to me. And they oh, also wow. say that it's got winds of 130 miles per hour. What? Well, they always go low. Still. They always yeah, they go always low. When you see the yeah, that, JTWC that was... saying 130 miles an hour, they said 120 during the peak of Maranti, I believe. So, <laughs> or a little bit yeah. higher, maybe. Yeah, didn't they say, like, the peak of uh, Napartak was only 130? Uh, I think they something did. like that. They always go very low. Look at the pressure, though. 915 from the official JT, uh, JMA, Japanese Meteorological Agency, the officials in that part of the world. And that usually correlates to borderline Category 5. In this part, yeah. in, in this area, if it was in the Atlantic, it would probably be a Category Five, because of the different conditions. But let's not confuse everyone too much, as we reach and recon. nine o'clock, I believe, in the Philippines at this time, and recon. Um, and I don't know if they've had any updates since. I assume not. But signal two warnings for Catanduanes, which means that um, sixty-one to one hundred and twenty kilometer per hour winds are expected in the next 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anyone wants to add any more comments or whether we want to touch on what's going on down under because Cyclone Yvette uh, recently weakened um, mm -hmm. below yeah, the tropical storm threshold. Quite ugly. Uh, Nathan, uh, adding to uh, the uh, Reference to Down Under, 
Uh, for our viewers, stay tuned to the AU channel. Uh, I am planning uh, for uh, updates. Uh, we can't rule out Exivet uh, coming back as a cat one. So Christmas Day uh, or Boxing Day, we could have a cat one system impacting on the WA case. And um, I've been uh, reading uh, through the latest uh, bomb uh, information. It is to drop to 9.92 uh, within the next uh, eight hours. So stay tuned to the AU channel and um, also uh, the main channel. Indeed. Um, we're obviously going to be running updates on the storm at regular intervals at this point. Um, uh, just a quick question. Could it track further south is the question from Electro. It depends how much. I really don't think it's going to move much more south. Put it this way, it would be a surprise if it ends up going further south than it currently is. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's yeah. not forget, by the way, uh, I just did the conversions on the JMA. Uh, they do say 100 knots, um, but they do use 10 minutes sustained winds, which means that 1 minute sustained, which is what we always go by here, that would be 115 knots. Um, and 915 millibars, so crazy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I have noticed that Pegasus have been a little bit slow so far. Um, they were very yes. slow with issuing the Signal 1 warnings. I believe they're still behind with Signal 2 warnings. This, is, th this graphic that you're seeing is not official, but it's what we believe, using their own criteria, is what we believe that the Signal warnings should be right now. And that's for Signal 2 warnings for the... The only land area under Signal 2 warning being Catanduanes and Signal 1 warnings for large parts extending as far as uh, Mindoro and um, I believe the island's called Panau um, and as far north as Isabella too. Um, I think that concludes our update. We're obviously going to be around Search Force 13 on Facebook and Twitter. You can add Fool 13 on Skype as well. That's F O O L 1 3. And I expect that we'll be bringing to you regular updates on the live streaming service. And I expect that we'll be beginning that at some time around 6 p.m. Philippine time or maybe a little bit later. The social mediums, Facebook and Twitter, will keep you updated as to when we expect that we'll be going live. And obviously, until then, uh, we wish you all the best. And um, on this Christmas Eve, where we should really be um, minds all at ease and whatnot, uh, but obviously it's our duty and of, uh, and of course of real danger to real lives in the Philippines right now. I don't know if anyone has any final comments for us. Yeah, uh, well, all the best. Yeah, just here's the here's the actual intensity right now by GHWC. 110 knots, 941 millibars. Yeah, that's by default. Two, uh, two weeks. That's all I'm going to say. And Forever. Pressure's too high. Yeah. Uh, the pressure's... Man, the pressure's actually too high. Um, right. For... And I've seen a lot of comments saying, like, you know, went from Cat 1 to Cat 5. It's not officially a Cat 5. That's our estimates. Uh, officially it's Cat what, what I'd like to propose to the viewers, if, if you've seen a lot of our videos before and you've seen a lot of Category 5s come and go this year and last year, make your own minds up. See what... What... what, what do you think it looks like? Um, because, let's not forget, unless we've got the ground instruments or planes going into these storms, it is not an exact science. Um, so, it is very much, it, it is sort of a war of opinions almost, um, but nonetheless, it's a storm to be taking seriously across the Philippines, and I'm pretty sure we've um, put, that, um, put that point across during our stream tonight. Mm 
And uh, Nathan, uh, just uh, sidetracking for a minute uh, as uh, uh, we uh, end the uh, update. Uh, just waiting for the uh, Western Australian Tropical Cyclone Warning Centre to update uh, the latest on X tropical cyclone Yvette. So that should be out within mm -hmm. the next few minutes. All right. Well, I don't think it'll be bringing towards us much more information than uh, what we already know, I guess. Uh, but we'll keep you on top of that as well, if necessary. Um, we're going to call it a night here. Um, we've only been here for 30 minutes. We were only planning to go on for 30 minutes, so um, we will be bringing things to a close. And um, obviously, we'll be uh, back we'll again. Come to the oh. Yes, go ahead. I was just going to say, we'll tell everybody to stay safe in the Philippines uh, as we head into uh, Christmas Day over there soon. Is it Christmas Eve? So I can't remember. Uh, Christmas Eve! It'll, it'll be Christmas, Christmas Eve for a while yet. Yeah, I know time yeah. zones can get the better of us sometimes. Well, oh, we'll, yes. Yeah, not to worry. Not to worry. But I hope all stay safe. All right. Thanks very much, Lee, and uh, from everyone else on the team this evening. Uh, we'll be back again later today, as it is in the Philippines and pretty much uh, everywhere else in the Eastern Hemisphere, at least, with more updates on the storm. Um, until then, uh, we'll see you soon, and uh, we hope all goes well in the Philippines, and let's hope that the storm weakens a bit, shall we? <laughs> yes. Yep. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>